Hello everyone and welcome back to Automation Recipes. My name is Vinicius Maidana and today we're starting a series of videos about web automation. In this first video, we're going to talk about the basics of web automation using IBM RPA. So you can think of this as Web Automation 101. Now, before we begin actually automating anything, I want to talk a little bit about concepts. Um, so if you are familiar with Windows automation in IBM RPA, or if you have watched our recorder series um, of videos, which is um, about Windows automation, um, you may remember that we need to launch and attach a window uh, to the execution context of the bot in order for the bot to understand, to for the bot to know which window we should be looking at. So if we were to automate an application, we would need to uh, attach a window. The same goes for web automation. Only for web automation, we don't really attach any application, any specific application. We only attach a browser instance. The main difference between Windows and web automation is that Windows automation, you're actually automating specific applications. So which is why you need to attach the specific app window you want to automate. Web automations, you're basically using a browser, right? Uh, to automate any number of websites. So what you actually attach to the bot execution to context so that the bot understands, so that the bot knows what it should be looking at, what you actually attach are browsers and tabs. So before you actually start automating anything, as far as web automation goes, what you need to do is you need to use the start browser command. Now the start browser command is the one that you're actually going to use to start a browser, as the name implies. Uh, as you can see here, we have uh, a few options of browsers we can use with IBM RPA. Whatever browser you choose here is the browser that the bot's going to start for your web automation. For this series, we're going to be using Google Chrome for all of automations. And here on the first parameter of this command is the instance name. Now, the instance name is the browser instance name. So this is the name that you're going to refer to manipulate the instance of the browser itself. So for instance, uh, I'm going to type here the name of the instance, Chrome. We could also put the name of this instance inside a variable, but we're just going to hard code it in this case. Um, now, there are several options here that we can go further into in another occasion. But for now, I'm just going to save this. And as you can see, as soon as I uh, save the start browser command, the close browser command pops up for me. And in the instance name um, parameter, this is the instance name I gave for the browser instance uh, on the start browser command. So I named that instance as Chrome. So for the bot to identify which browser instance it's trying to close, we need to name the instance right here. So Chrome is the name of the instance. And here we have the keep browser open parameter, uh, we, whether we want to keep the browser open or not. Now you may be wondering, well, what am I going to use the close browser command for if I want to keep the browser open? Well, here's the thing. When you use the close browser command, what you're closing is the bot's manipulation of that instance. So if you keep the browser open, whatever browser the bot opened is going to remain open but the bot's manipulation of that browser is going to cease. In this way, you won't have any backend process stuck eating up your memory after the bot has already finished its execution. I'm going to leave the keep browser open parameter activated here. Um, so I'm just gonna save this. And now we have the close browser and the start browser here. Every single web command you want to use needs to be between the start browser and the close browser. Between these two commands is what we can call the web automation context. So for instance, if I wanted to navigate to any website, what I would do is I would use the navigate command and I would put it between the start browser and the close browser command. Here, let's try navigating to the ibm.com page. So if we save this and start the bot, I'm going to start without debugging so it goes faster. You can see that it started a browser and navigate it to the IBM web page. I'm in Brazil, so I was forwarded to the Brazilian uh, IBM web page. Uh, I'm just going to accept these cookies here 
um, just so we can proceed, so I can explain other stuff for you guys. So, um, as you can see, pretty simple, right? I kept the browser open, the bot has finished executing, and I navigated to the web page, to the IBM web page. There are several important things we need to understand about the browser instance that the bot starts. Now I have another Chrome browser opened here and you may notice that there are several differences between this browser instance that I opened myself and the browser instance that the bot opened. You can see the, that there are no bookmarks here on this browser while I have a few bookmarks here in the bookmark bar. Um, I'm also not logged into the Chrome here, uh, as you can see. Uh, so basically what you want, need to understand is that the browser instance that the bot starts, and that goes for any browser, is kind of like an incognito mode. Um, the browser instance that the bot start is unique in a way that there are no profiles loaded automatically. So, you know, if you are logged into Chrome, uh, on your machine, the browser instance that the bot opens is not going to be logged into Chrome using your Google account. Uh, also, there are no bookmarks, no extensions, absolutely nothing. The browser instance that the bot uses is, as I mentioned, kind of like incognito mode, but it's even more than that because even the extensions aren't there. It's sort of like a, a, a raw browser instance. There really isn't anything uh, here, uh, only the browser itself, no bookmarks, no saved settings, no profile saved settings, nothing at all. If we want to use this kind of configuration, what we need to do is we need to use these other options here in the uh, IBM RPA start browser command. So for instance, if you want to load a user profile, you need to enable the load user profile um, parameter. If you want to enable extensions, the same thing. And also you need to point towards the folder in which the extensions you want to use are at. There are other options here that we won't go into now, but there is one option that is important, which is the headless parameter. The headless parameter allows the bot to manipulate a browser instance without actually opening a browser. When you activate the headless parameter, basically what you're doing is you're telling the bot to manipulate a browser instance to automate a web application with a browser instance in the backend, in the background. So the browser is not really going to pop up on your screen. Now, these are the most important options as far as the start browser command is concerned. Now, another basic command that is very important for web automation is the find or attach tab command. Uh, now, this command is basically you know, self-explanatory. Basically, what it does is it finds or attaches uh, a new tab that was opened uh, in the browser. Now, the most common use for this kind of command is when you're automating a certain web application, a certain page, uh, in which the page automatically opens a new tab when you click on a specific option. This is very common in many pages. And basically what you need to do is you need to find out what is the title of that new tab that pops up and you need to input that title here so that the bot finds that bot, that tab and attaches it to the execution context so it knows which tab it needs to look into. You can do this with uh, previously open tabs as well. Basically what you do, how you navigate between tabs using the bot is using this command and using the title of the tabs uh, or you could also use a regular expression to find the tab you're trying to get. In this way, you don't really need to get the specific exact title for the bot to find a tab. All you need to do is use a regular expression that can find the tab you're looking for. Uh, one other option is to use the index of the tab. Uh, tabs indexes go from one to, you know, whatever index the tab is on. The first tab that is opened as soon as the browser is open uh, is always number one, is always at index number one. Second tab that the browser opens is index number two. Uh, third tab is index number three, so on and so forth. Now to test out this command, here's what we're gonna do. Basically what I'm doing here is I'm starting a browser, then pressing and holding the control key and pressing T to open a new tab. Then I'm using the navigate command to navigate to the ibm.com page. Let's run the script as it is and see what happens. 
Now, as you can see here, the bot is actually navigating to the IBM.com page using that first tab that we opened before. Uh, I mean, the first tab that the browser opens as soon as it's started. Uh, so how can we find this tab and navigate to the IBM page using this specific tab? This is what we're going to use the finder attach tab command for. Uh, we're going to put it right before the navigate command. And we're going to try to find that tab using the index, which is the second tab, right? Is the second tab that is open in the browser. So we're going to save this. Let's close this uh, previous browser instance that we were using. And let's start the bot again. So as you can see now, this time, the bot actually used the second tab to navigate to the web page, uh, to the IBM dot com web page. You may notice that every single time I navigate to this page using the bot, the cookie policy pops up so I can accept the cookies uh, for the web page. This is because, like I mentioned before, the browser instance that IBM RPA uses is unique in that it is a raw instance. So every single time you open a new browser instance using a bot, Every single configuration in the browser is completely erased. It's blank. There's really nothing there. Even the cookie settings, uh, the cookie policies that you accept on specific websites, everything is blank, is, is brand new. Which is why if you want to load specific configurations into the browser uh, by using a user profile, you need to use the load user profile parameter. Now, the last thing I want to look into with this video is how to use the web automation recorder. Now, like I mentioned before, if you watched our previous series about the Windows recorder and Windows automation in general, you may remember that I did mention the web recorder there, but I never really went into it. And the reason for that is that we're going to go into the web recorder now. I'm going to show you the basics on how to use the web recorder. Now, the first step for using the web automation recorder is to find the WDG automation extension on the Chrome Web Store. So if you navigate to the Chrome Web Store here and we search for WDG, you can see here that the web, the WDG Web Automation Recorder extension is available. Uh, I already installed this extension into my Chrome browser. So as you can see, the extension is right here, WDG Automation. Uh, at the moment, the extension is turned off. But this is the extension that you need for using the IBM RPA Web Automation Recorder. Now, the next step I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come here to IBM RPA Studio and start the recorder. And as you can see, the recorder bar is loading up here. Now, I'm going to activate the web recorder right here. I'm going to click on this button and I'm also going to turn the extension on. As you can see, the extension uh, icon lit up. So I got the extension turned on and the web recorder is also turned on. Now, the biggest difference between the web recorder and the Windows recorder is that unlike the Windows recorder in which you have to map um, elements manually and choose what actions you want to perform on those elements, the web automation recorder translates every single action I perform on the browser automatically into commands as soon as I perform those actions on the browser with the extension and the web recorder on. So for instance, if I want to navigate to IBM.com again um, and hit enter here. Now, as I uh, navigated here to, um, to the uh, IBM page, and if you go back to studio, you can see that the navigate command is right here. And if I click on anything here on this page, for instance, let's try clicking on this button here. Um, and then let's try clicking on something else just so we can fill up the, the script with commands. Uh, let's, uh, let's click on this link here. And as, as, as you can see, it opened up a new tab. So if you go back to the studio now, you're going to see that a whole bunch of commands are automatically inserted here. They've been all automatically inserted into the script by the studio's uh, web recorder. You can see the wait for element in the web page here, the click on the web page, uh, then you have uh, another wait for element, another click, and navigate command here. So, you know, a whole bunch of clicks and a whole bunch of navigation commands 
um, are being inserted automatically by the recorder here. So using the IBM RPA automation web recorder is actually even simpler than using the Windows automation recorder. But there are some details that you need to understand about the web automation recorder in order to use it properly. And the first thing you need to understand is that, as you can see, before every single click on a web page, it inserts automatically the wait for element in the web page command. And the reason why the web recorder does this is to make the script as resilient as possible. Now, it is good practice to use the wait for element in the web page command before the first click on every single new page that is loaded so that you can be sure that that element has been loaded before the bot actually tries to click on the element. If the bot tries to click on the element before it's loaded into the page, uh, it may result in script failure in the automation failing, which is why the recorder puts this command before every single click uh, the bot is supposed to perform. Now, to be fair, this is a little too much. I mean, the recorder is trying to make your script safe. It's trying to make your script resilient. But to be honest, not all of these web uh, wait for element and a web page commands are needed. Like I mentioned, the good practice is to use this command before the first click on every single new web page that is loaded. But not every click results into navigating to a different page. Sometimes a click just enables an option in a page, right? And you're still on the same page. It's just a new option that's enabled. Uh, in those cases, it really isn't all that necessary for the wait for element in a web page command to be there. Now, you may want to leave these commands here anyway, because as I mentioned before, they do make your script safer. They do make your script um, more resilient. But it can be a little overzealous to leave every single wait for element in a web page command here before every click. So basically what I will say to you when using the web recorder for IBM RPA is even if the recorder managed to capture every single one of your actions and also insert all the necessary commands in the script, it is a good idea to take a look at the script and see what exactly the recorder inserted there are all these wait for elements in the web page commands really necessary? Um, as you can see, in, in some moments, it's actually navigating to a different page. So in this case, it's clicking on a button, but it's also navigating to a different page because basically, when I clicked on a, a button on the web page, on the IBM uh, web page, it, it basically navigated to a different page. So instead of you know just following the click, the, the recorder noticed that you were navigating to another page and it just inserted the page address here, as you can see. So, you know, um, the web automation recorder is very easy to use, extremely easy and simple to use, but it can be a little overzealous on how it builds your script for you. So again, it is a good idea to take a look at the script and see if there aren't any commands that might be discardable, like too many wait for element in the web page commands, that kind of stuff. So these are the basics of web automation. You could call it uh, web automation 101. Um, I am going to go further into using more features of the web automation recorder on our next videos. And I'm also going to show you many different approaches to automating a web page using IBM RPA. So this is a very basic, this is a very basic concepts of uh, web automation. On our next session, I'm going to actually try to perform an automation yeah, on a web application, it's an HR management system. And I'm going to show you different approaches on how we can build web automation, as well as some tips and tricks on what, how you can deal with unexpected situations when dealing with web automation. So look forward to that. Thank you for your attention, and I'll see you next time.